Coach EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. A moment ago, here was the scene with the Cowboys emerging from their tunnel. It was loud. It's still loud. We're ready for football as the Cowboys get set to match up. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line with Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles. They run with Ezekiel Elliott, last year's NFL rushing leader. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Cowboys and Eagles, of course, such a great rivalry. Last year, the Cowboys got the better of the Eagles both times that they met with Philly coming off their Super Bowl title. But in weeks 10 and 14, it was Dallas beating Philly by a single possession. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. Looking to throw. Prescott completes it to Jason Witten. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Call that a very strong gain of 24. The beauty of route running is it doesn't matter what position, everyone's doing the same thing. In this case, tight end, selling the vertical route. Get the defensive back on his heels, break off for the corner, and with good timing, you get a completion as we just saw there. Here's Elliott, and he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. That's gonna go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Draw play, Elliott. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. Nine good yards here on the run, and now third down. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Prescott from the gun on third. Complete to Jason Witten. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 21. Brandon, lest my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, it's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. On second down, Elliott. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Here's Prescott. Flushed out right. He can run for it, and he will. And he is not going to get to the marker as they stop him short at the 14. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. Of course, the door for Maher was opened after a little bit of a surprise move. The Cowboys letting go of Dan Bailey last year. Yeah, Maher took over in the preseason. He's from Nebraska via the Canadian Football League where he kicked for four years. And I saw him personally make two game-winning field goals last season against Detroit and in Atlanta.
After the main field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Eagles take the field again, and I want to revisit what we said earlier about their start now at 3-3. Three and three. Not an amazing beginning of the season, but, hey, they're still tied for the lead in the NFC East. Big one Sunday night, Week 7 at Dallas, and head coach Doug Peterson, he already said, hey, we're going to go down to Dallas, we're going to be ready to play, and we're going to win that football game. What do you make of the comment? I think that Doug Peterson is telling his team that he still believes in them. You know what a tough market it is in Philadelphia. You know what it's like with the expectations around the league that this is a Super Bowl-ready roster and they're at 3-3. Three and three. He wants that team to know that he believes in them and that they're still talented enough to go out and get it done. And in a sense, putting himself on the line and trying to take the pressure off of his players because you know what kind of questions they're going to face all week going into that. He wants all those questions to be directed to him. Throwing again on second down. Wentz, a dump off to Sproles. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Now the Cowboys here on third down, bringing in an extra defensive back. Working from the gun, Wentz. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Back deep for the Cowboys, Tavon Austin. Fielded at the 20. And call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Cowboys taking the field again here offensively. And speaking of Dallas, we discussed their week six loss to the Jets earlier. That's a head scratcher. Even though it's on the road, nobody saw them losing that. And now all of a sudden they're at three and three. And when you look for positives, that's what you just hit on. They're three and three and still tied for first in their division with Philadelphia. And if you really want to make things go away, at least for a little while, beat Philadelphia, take over first place by yourself. Oh, by the way, they play Sunday night in Dallas, excuse me, in Arlington, Texas. That's a big ball game for them, a big ball game for Philly. And the bottom line is, if you win your division, no matter what the record, you go to the playoffs. They'll run with Elliott. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Right there, 54 miles. Let's put him on the buses. Let's put that team on the bus. Third and long for Prescott. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired up. That's a big game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. From the shotgun, a give to Elliott. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. On third down, it's Prescott. And that's Elliott, complete. No gain at all on the play there, and that'll bring up fourth down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. 
and that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over this one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, game. your live conditions, right? Live conditions, game conditions are a whole lot different than practice, where you just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. Wentz now on first down. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Yeah, nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Wentz going to throw. It's caught by Jackson. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A gain there of 21 yards. Okay, what can't Deshaun Jackson do? All right, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game, and he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. We have. What are you, are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders, and Deshaun Jackson made that big-time return all the way back for a game winner in that one. I still remember seeing the looks of disbelief on the Giants' sideline. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. This is caught, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Second and goal from the one. Now wins. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Defensive end Demarcus Lawrence applied the heat. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. This is third and goal now. 80,000 on their feet here at Arlington. From the gun, it's Wins. Got a man open. It's Ertz. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Eight yards on the touchdown pass, and the Eagles have taken the lead. No surprise there, third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. 
And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Cowboys in possession as they've got it with second down and less than a yard. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Elliott. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. And now it looks like we've got a Cowboy shaken up down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The Cowboys on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Here's Prescott. And on the left side, he's got Witten. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 10 there. Good enough for a Cowboy first down. Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think to last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swain, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 yards and a Cowboy first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. First down, and it's Pollard again. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. This is Elliott. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Jason Whitten, the intended target, and it's third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throw in. Press gun. And this is going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, 
about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick. But now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range. And you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. This is Howard on second down. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get up field. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones. <laughs> Not having balls go through goalposts. Now Elliott. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 16. Prescott, and this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The last time we saw Jason Witten on a football field instead of the broadcasting booth was, of course, two years ago, 2017. He had 63 catches, 560 yards, five touchdowns. It was his 11th Pro Bowl that season for a man who came into the league back in 2003. No running room for Zeke on first down as he'll maybe get a yard out of that. Defensively, it was Avante Maddox with a tackle. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Again to Elliott. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Cowboys on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and five. Now Prescott. And that will be incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. Back deep is Darren Sproles. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? They'll begin the drive with Sproles. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. The Anthony Brown there on the tackle. 
tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They run with Howard. And he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Now wins. And he connects with Ertz. And way up past the 35 go, before let's he's go. taken down. Let's go. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. So here's a first and 10 check, 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 at the 38. Check, check, check. Wait, no. Running with Howard. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. That's it. That's it. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Wentz. He'll hit Jackson complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of on, midfield baby, at the 48. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Here we go, here we go. 180! Get the foot! Right, 54! Quick talking about it! On first down, they run with Howard. And he's got this one across midfield into Cowboy territory. Tackle there by Leighton Vander Esch. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The Pro Bowl tight end, Zach Ertz, the intended target. And that'll make it third down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. And this is caught by Jackson. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 39. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was something a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So a line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Wins to throw again. Screen pass to Scrolls. It'll be a pickup of eight on the screen, and it sets up a third down. They don't want it. Keep playing hard, fellas, all day. Woo! Let's get it. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Delayed give to Scrolls. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. 
It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Elliott is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up, no balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because bre you break chestnuts? I I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I, I have no idea. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Scott on first down. He'll buy some time right. Oh, Prescott stripped. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And some room to roam now. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return and an Eagle touchdown. They give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice. You're such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. Elliott good on the extra point, and the lead is now 17-3. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go, baby. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it. And that's what you don't want to do. To throw is Prescott. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Now with that incompletion, let's do something different. I'm going to go through a few teams that are on losing streaks, and you tell me if there's reason for concern there. Let's start with the Cowboys. Definitely reason for concern. Not as dominant on defense as they should be. And offensive line injuries. Three straight losses there, three and three. How about the Chiefs? Two straight home losses. Yeah, they just can't stop anyone running the football. No okay, and then the Rams, three straight losses for them. Yeah, definite reason for concern because they cannot get the running game figured out. Todd Gurley, not touching it enough, but Kenny. And then the Browns, everyone was so high on them before the season started. What about now? So many expectations. That's part of the problem they have right now, but they still would be contenders in their division. Quickly back to the Chiefs, though. Are you concerned about them? They're still a real contender here, aren't still they? Still a contender, but I'm concerned as heck on defense for anyone who wants to be committed to running the football. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, 
The defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. A big boot that time, 57 oh, yards the official distance. Go. And the Let's Eagles go. will have it taking over first and 10. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And now consider the lead. The question is how much is good enough? Are you going for more? It's the NFL. There's never enough, I believe, because they get reeled in all the time when you sit on the ball. I think that they will try and move the ball downfield and try and squeeze a few more points out of this first half. They'll be careful. They'll be a little bit cautious at times, but also they will attack downfield and try and get in position for at least three points. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. To throw again on second down, Wentz. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Now Howard. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. To throw on second and six, Wentz. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Throwing now is Wentz. Dumps that off to his running back, Jordan Howard. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Sproles. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first Here down. We go. Here we go. Second Here and we inches go. is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. They'll run it with Sproles. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Jeff Heath, the one to bring him down. 
If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. Here's Sproles. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Here we go, here we go. 120! 54. 54. Let's go! Wentz going to try and throw on third. That's caught by Jackson. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Wentz now to throw. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. That catch good for five. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. Come on, fellas. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Wentz on the bootleg. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time, and that'll bring up second down. Well, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent Good offense, just better defense. I think you're right. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Wentz. And this is going to be intercepted. It's the Pro Bowler, Byron Jones. Well, we got a second. Let's look ahead to week seven and what's on the slate. You know, things start out Thursday night. Kansas City at Denver, divisional battle. Suddenly an interesting game. Kansas City having lost their last two, and Denver now playing defense as we expected. But how about the NFL 100 game of the That's week? It, Oakland at Green Bay, a rematch of Super Bowl II. Also have New Orleans at Chicago, and Philly visiting Dallas on Sunday night. That is a huge one in the NFC East. Yeah, both teams 3-3. Three and three. The winner will have the lead in that division. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Watch the run. Watch the run. <laughs> Again, it's Elliott, and he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. We know that old expression, it's not my night, 
it hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Looking to throw, Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Cowboy first down. Well, using Zeke Elliott in the passing game, that's something Cowboy fans are getting used to. Last year, 77 receptions. And you think back to his rookie season, he had 32 and then 26 his second year. But he's really on the uptick. Another carry tonight for the workhorse Elliott. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Don't get nervous. They go to Elliott again. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Prescott from the gun. And that's Elliott complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Yeah, and we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now Dak on the option left. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Prescott. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Prescott. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide-open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Cooper's got it. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Prescott now, five straight completions here in this second half. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown as his guys are back within a single score. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Extra point by Marr. Up and good. And that slices the lead down to 17-10.
Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And the drive starts with a completion, left side. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now it's Sproles. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. And let's pin the mirrors back and go full strength. A quick throw there out to Jeffrey. And he'll be brought down, Go losing yardage back at the 40. He lost four there, and it's third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. Working from the gun, Wentz. Completes it to Aguilar. Call it a gain of three, and that's going to make it fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line absolutely ideal yeah, from that position you're hoping to get it down inside the 15 inside the five running. superb running. You're trapped, you're trapped. they start on the ground with Elliott and he will double the space they have to work with as they take it from the two to the four well not a game that you're going to go crazy about but when you start at your own two yard line any type of space is good for the offensive guys yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. Last year, Dak Prescott had three fourth quarter comebacks, and he's in search of another one right now. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And that won't buy him much room. Just a one-yard gain to the five. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. And he's brought down, but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. Eight yards there, getting him out of danger. It's a first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So after three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Prescott throwing complete to Cobb. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. 
Dak Prescott last year against Philly. Boy, biggest game of his career passing yardage-wise. 455 yards, three touchdowns, and a 29-23 December victory over the Eagles. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Pass on target, Prescott to Cooper. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. It's funny, when I go back to our pregame meeting with Amari Cooper, and we mentioned, eh, what if they play man coverage against you? He almost seemed offended by it, didn't he? I'll beat it. That's basically what he said, right? <laughs> I mean, the best receivers we've ever talked to and covered, when you talk about covering them with one guy, they think that's a personal affront. If they feel like if they can't just beat one defender, then they're not very good. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. On second down, it's Elliott, and he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Ronald Darby that time, the one who got a hand in and knocked it free. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Prescott. That's complete to Cobb. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Let's go, let's go, let's Dak go. fighting his tight end, Witten, and the Cowboys have a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. First down, Prescott. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And finally taken down at the 20-yard line. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second and a yard, Prescott. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. That one complete, Elliott. But he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. And they got three yards. That's enough. A conversion, and now it's first and goal. 
Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run as they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as it kicks away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And able to Come get on, this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Good push up front in that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. This pass complete wins to Ertz, and they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 14 yards there and an eagle first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league, those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. On first down, Howard. Demarcus Lawrence in on the tackle. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing, often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Throwing his wins. It's caught by Jackson. And he'll go down at the 28. Seven yards there and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the gun, it's wins. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. 
and chalk that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And the kick by Elliott is good. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So Dak and the Cowboys down 20 to 17, 2-11 to go. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and 10. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. Here's Prescott. Steps away. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Looking to throw again on second down. Prescott completes it to Jason Witten. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. Mike 54. Mike 54. Prescott to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Elliott. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. Prescott urging his guys to go quickly. They need to get up and set. Here's Prescott. Oh, Prescott stripped. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. He's back to throw, and he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Go, it's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. First down now, but the clock continues right to move. Right there, right there. Now Prescott. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, right there on the coverage. 
Couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You're having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. A dump off to Elliott. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Prescott. Got his man there complete to Gallup. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Pardon, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And with time a factor here late, here he'll go. just here take a knee and they'll put here it out go. to the 25. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. A good run there to start the drive. 13 yards, first down. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. And out now come the Eagles. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw his wins. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. So a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. 
And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. Set for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. They go with Howard again. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. First throw of overtime for Wentz. Screen pass to Sproles. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. On second and 11 now. Wentz. It's caught by Aguilar. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. Shotgun now for Wentz. Going to look deep for Jeffrey. And that is incomplete. Well done by the defense. They did their job here in overtime. Boy, did they ever, because now it's fourth and really long. So if you do decide to go for it, people think you might be a little bit on the nut side, don't they? But guess what? If I did decide to go for it, I'd call something deep. <laughs> I'd throw a deep pass and hope that the defense didn't remember to just knock it down. If they intercept it, it's almost like a great punt and helps out your defense with field position. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it but they turned it back over to him, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? And part one is done, now part two. Here's Elliott, and he's gonna get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They'll keep it on the ground. Elliott. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? Love has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. And what can Prescott do in the OT? They'll roll him out right. And an alley to run. 
one. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and then will be second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. You must be, you must be getting tired of seeing me. Draw play, Elliott. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. They'll try to throw now. Prescott, and that time almost intercepted. That would have changed things here in overtime, but instead, second down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Here's Prescott. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. 23 yards the pick up there. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Now we know this offense has the potential to strike quickly, and they just bit off two huge plays on back-to-back -back snaps. So on the other side of the ball, you've got to go Band of Brothers' thought process. No one left behind. No pointing fingers, no accusations, because if you don't, those quick strikes we just saw, they become long-lasting. Prescott now, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Brandon, I'd go ahead and kick it right now. I know it's only second down, but I kick it and give myself a little margin for error here. Don't wait for third, have the extra down just in case. If something goes wrong, miss, messed up snap, anything like that, you fall on it, guess what? It's third down. You still have the ball. You still have a chance to kick it. Now a carry for the big fella. This is Jameis Olawale. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. All right, well, they didn't kick it on second down, now third and goal. You have to kick it here. Absolutely have to kick it because if you get a bad snap, you fall on it, you got a chance to kick it again on fourth down. Let's say it gets blocked and it's behind the line of scrimmage. You fall on it, you get another chance at it. Give yourself that option. Give yourself that opening. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Give the sack to Fletcher Cox. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. So a big one coming now for Brett Maher from the left half. Should be a fairly easy one here. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goal's from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, but he <laughs> pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation.